here for another episode of Legends of Tomorrow. And <laughs> this episode was, um, it was simple yet complex. So it's, <laughs> the episode starts with Charlie. She's telling, you know, she's basically telling the story of how she, you know, because she got rid of all three of the, the pieces of the loom of fate. She's telling everybody how she got rid of the last piece. And she apparently gave it to the enchantress and <laughs> you know the uh not the same not not the same not june moon from um <laughs> from the suicide squad movie but um but again well since but dc has this thing where if certain people are alive in the movies they got to be dead on tv and vice versa enchantress died in the movies so now we can have her on tv um <laughs> charlie gave her the ring and you know basically told her you know to keep it from her to make sure she couldn't get it so now the um you know the whole team they're trying to figure out all right how can we get the ring if charlie doesn't even remember where it is so constantine's like i can come up with a magic spell that can show us the, the ring's whereabouts and we just have to find it um you know the whole team's getting ready to do it now sarah's going through this weird thing because we we found out in the la in the last episode you know she took a shot from basically a god and she didn't die like she survived everybody's wondering how she survived you know and it seems to i don't know if the blast that she took is causing this or if something else is causing this but sarah's basically developed some weird time some some weird like future power and you know and it makes perfect sense because the thing is with them when it comes to like dark matter when you get hit with the particle accelerator your power basic your power generally sometimes like when you do get powers it takes on the form of something that is meaningful to your life like for instance if you watch young justice the um, the spanish kid who can teleport his dad created teleportation um teleportation tech which is like he created like the boom like the zeta tubes you know which can teleport people from one place to another so the father spends years creating teleportation you know technology and then his son ends up with teleportation powers you know like <laughs> like things of that nature like sarah spent the last five years time traveling she's been in the temporal zone she's she's gone forward in time she's gone backwards in time she's you know she's having this weird thing where at least so far she's able to see about 10 seconds into the future she's able to see certain things happen before they happen and nobody knows how she got this power <laughs> you know obviously she wasn't in central city when the particle accelerator went off but nobody knows how she got this power and she hasn't even told anybody yet you know, so the whole group, like they're in a circle, they're in a, they're in a magic circle and <laughs> they're in John Constantine's house. They're all holding hands. Now, John's like, I'm going to do the spell. When I do the spell, the ring's going to present itself, you know, and it's going to take all of us to where the ring is. Now, in typical, in typical natural legends fashion, when, while John's doing the spell, everybody's talking, certain people are thinking about other things, everybody's distracted. The only two people that are actually focused on the spell that John's doing is John and, um, and Zari, because Zari, you know, like, like she said last episode, she's going to be on Constantine's ass because she's trying to save her brother. So then Sarah, awkward, Sarah, you know, she sees, like, cause she, she sees Ava, she sees across from Ava. She sees Ava and then she sees a shadow of Ava running around to the other side of the circle. So then Sarah's just like, which, which is basically saying that, like telling her in the next 10 seconds, Ava's going to leave and, and come around the circle, but she doesn't know why. So then Sarah ended up passing out. And then when Sarah passed out, Ava ran around <laughs> to the other side of the circle, which made, Nate, which made Nate let go of the circle, and then Charlie let go of the circle. So the only people holding on at this point was Constantine, Zari, and, um, and Gary. And then the spell worked. The ring, the final ring of the Luma Fate presented itself. And only Constantine and Zari reached for it. Gary didn't reach for it. And then Constantine and Zari disappeared and got transported into the past. They're actually, they're in Constantine's house, but they're in his house in the past. There's this like nice old lady, you know, she's there. She's like, oh, welcome to the chateau. You know, are you guys here for a room? And they're just like, yeah, we're here for a room. So, so John's like, yo, the ring is here. He's like, yo, the ring is here somewhere. We just got it. He's like, we just got to find the ring. And then the old woman, she said, she said to Zari, she go. She asked Ari. She was like, "Hey, have you guys seen?" She's looking for a book or something. She's like, "Have you guys seen my whatever? 
you know, and then Zari was like, yeah, it's right over there. And then she's like, oh, thank you. She's just like, I, she said, and she, when she said this, I was just like, huh, what an odd thing to say. She literally, she literally said, I'm sure it will turn up eventually. Sometimes the best way to find something is to not look for it. So John and Zari was just kind of like, okay, whatever. And I was just like, that's a very specific thing to say <laughs> to say to somebody. So the two of them are just like, all right, the ring's here. We got to find it. More and more guests start showing up. And then, you know, they, they later find out because one of them actually tried to roll up on Zari. They found out that the dude who tried to roll up on Zari was Jack the Ripper. And then the other guests that showed up oh, were, I don't want to say, but they were basically random, were random figures throughout history. There was Bonnie and Clyde. There was um, Brutus, um, Caesar's brother. There was Black Caesar. You know, there were like all these historical figures. And then John was just like, these are encores. Because remember, remember, remember encores? <laughs> like, encores were a thing. And then we just stopped doing it. So now, because we haven't had encores in like four or five episodes, they're bringing the encore. They're basically just giving us a whole bunch of encores all at once. And John was like, that's weird. He was like, yo, I told Astra I was going to get the ring and I was going to help her save her mom. Why is Astra sending all these encores to try to kill me? And then Zari was just like, but how do you know what's about you? Because she was just like, you know, maybe they were sent here to find the ring as well. And then John was like, you might be onto something, love. You know, so he infiltrates, you know, he infiltrates the, um, the, the he, he infiltrates like the gangs or whatever. And they said, they, they flat out said that they were here to get the ring. They said that they were sent here to collect the ring for the Luma fate. So everybody's looking for the ring. While, you know, the whole time Zari and John, they're bickering, you know, they're not really getting along. You know, John's like, oh, you're just some simple airhead. And then, you know, Zari was like, well, you're just some broken magic man who can't do magic. So the two of them are like building a rapport and building a friendship through um, through all their disdain for each other. You know, all the villains are basically trying to kill each other. You know, Zari has to dress up like Cleopatra to try to fool everybody. And there's this whole thing where because everybody's whole thing was it was like every man for themselves. You know, they were, you know, Zari tried to get everybody to come together. She was like, hey, let's work together, try to find the ring. But the villains was like, nah, screw that. First one that gets it, bam. So people were being taken out one by one. You know, like Black Black Caesar died. You know, like Brutus got shot. Henry VIII died. And then it came down to Bonnie and Clyde and then Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper, because John, John had knocked him out and tied him up in the closet. Jack the Ripper showed up and he was just like, yeah, that's John Constantine. And then, so now they're trying to kill John, you know, trying to kill Constantine specifically. Now, throughout the episode, the ring itself kept popping up. It would appear on a table and then it would disappear. It would pop up and then it would disappear. You know, so now we got Bonnie and Clyde, we got Jack the Ripper, and then we got Zari and Constantine looking for the ring. And then John got to a point where he was just like, yo, we've searched the entire house the ring isn't here. And then Zari was just like, yeah, this is frustrating. It's almost like the ring doesn't even want to be found. And then he was like, hey. <laughs> then he thought about what the woman said. And then he thought about the enchantress. And he was just like, that's old magic. Like, that's an old magic trick. And then she was like, what are you talking about? He was just like, the, the whole reason why we can't find the ring is because we're looking for it. He was like, you know, if we stop looking for it, it'll, it'll, you know, the ring will present itself because we don't want it. And then she was just like, well, I do want it because I needed to save my brother. And then John was like, yeah, he's like, I want it too because I need that ring to erase the demons of my past. So they're just like, well, if we both want it, but we can't want it in order to get it, how are we supposed to get it? Then he's like, fancy a drink. And then the two of them basically just got drunk or whatever. So then, you know, like Bonnie and Clyde and Jack the Ripper found them. They all got into a fight. Zari, you know, she learned how to use the um the totem so she can now shoot the, um she can shoot the wind. And then, you know, they kill, they kill Jack, they kill Bonnie and Clyde, they kill Jack, the, you know, her, they, they kill Jack the Ripper. And because they were fighting, because the two of them basically got to know each other, you know, because they were talking about like their own personal business and because they were fighting everybody, they weren't fighting the villains because of the ring. They were just fighting them to save their own ass. And after they killed all the encores, the ring presented itself to them because they had finally got to a point where they weren't looking for it. <laughs> so... Then Nate shows up, you know, like Nate and um and um and Charlie show up, and then they were just like, yeah, we tried to save you or whatever. And then she's like, it's too late. Now the weird thing is, earlier in the episode, Zari and Nate were having a conversation. You know, she was like, Zari was telling Nate about. She was like, yo, I met the old Zari. We had a nice conversation. And then Nate was just like, yeah. He was like, you know, I cared a lot about her, but he was like, I also care a lot about you as well. And then the two of them almost kissed before they got interrupted. Then later on in the episode. 
she's with she's with Constantine. The two of them are in the house together. They finally got the ring. That they come together and they almost kiss. So now there's like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, there's about to be this weird triangle between Constantine, Zari, and Nate. Or maybe Constantine and Zari just shared a moment and then they'll move on. But for some reason, I don't think so. Like, I think this love triangle thing will. It'll, I think this will become a thing at some point because I don't think I don't think like the new Zari at the end of the day is going to end up with Nate. You know, so now for the second part of the story, since they were all off doing the house thing, trying to get the ring, the rest of the team, Ava was using like her encore finding device. Like it was like it was on the fritz and then she was trying to fix it when, you know, she got it to work for a little bit. And then it showed every single encore on the planet was headed to Constantine's location, you know, and but but because the machine was broken, they didn't know they knew that all the encores were on the move, but they didn't know where they were going. Ava's whole thing was she was just like, well, since we don't know where they're going, we got to attack them at the source. And since we all know Astra is the one that has all the coins of all these encores, we'll just go to Astra. So, <laughs> you know, so Gary ends up, you know, sending Ava and himself, Ava and Mick to hell because Mick went to go see his daughter. He, you know, he came back and then they were just like, hey, Mick, you're back. I thought you went to see your daughter. He's like, yeah, she told me to go to hell. Where are we going anyway? And then he was like, yeah, we're going to hell. So, <laughs> you know, so the three of them go to hell. You know, they roll up on Astra. Astra's just like, you know, Astra's like, you know, I have the coins, but I didn't send them after John. So she opens the vault where her coins were and they were all gone. And then the one that she had around her neck, which was Constantine's, ended up being on um, Vandal Savage. So she was just like, yo, this bitch tricked me. So <laughs> the old woman, the older woman that took care of, that took her in and took care of her, she goes to see her. You know, she, she has Ava, she has Gary, she has um, Mick tied up in her, you know, in her club. She goes and sees her mentor and she's just like, yo, bitch, you took my, you took my coins. And then she was just like, of course I took your coins because she was like, I'm part of the loom of fate. You know, here's my sister. She was like, we're two thirds of the loom. And we want you to be the third person. They want to replace Charlie with Astra. And they were just like, you know, forget these stupid petty things about you sending encores after John. She was like, join the te join Team Loom and we could take over the world. And then she was just like, of course I'll join you. And then she was, you know, and then when then she left the room, was like, this bitch is crazy. So <laughs> she goes back to, you know, she goes back to, um, you know, to where Ava and them are, she lets them go. And she's just like, hey, look, you guys were trying to find the Loom of Fate for Constantine. She was like, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you finish doing that. And then Ava was just like, yo, look, instead of you becoming one of the Loom sisters and like terrorizing the world, she's like, make your own choice, like be your own person, come with us and, you know, help, help us find the Loom and then you could figure out your life. So, you know, and, and, and it was weird because Gary said a very specific thing. When Gary created the, um, the ring, the fire ring to send them to hell. He told everybody, he was just like, the rings, only, he's like, we're only going to be in hell for a couple of hours before we get transported back to the wave rider. Then later on, he was just like, yeah, I forgot to mention that when our four hours are up, anyone touching me gets automatically transported back to the wave rider. And they were all tied up in three separate places. So I was like, that's that bullshit. But then I was just like, what an odd thing to say. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I was like, there was no reason, like the fact that Gary specifically mentioned that i was just like that's a very odd thing to say and then i thought about it, i was just like a fourth person's going with them and then lo and behold astra decides to go with them so when the time when the time was up all four of them were holding hands and all of them along with astra got transported back to the wave rider so now astra is a part of the legends and if astra stays apart because mick is leaving <laughs> i keep saying this mick is not staying on this show next season if astra ends up staying on the legends for next season i'm all for that because i like her character you know so she gets transported back and you know so now they're all together uh, constantine's back you know zari's back you know and then they're all talking they're just like oh we have all, you know like we have we have all the rings now you know like we have all the loon pieces so you know, let, let's talk about what the next steps are as far as like bringing all these people back to life and then you know, John, John was just like, you know, hey, he, he was just like, you know, and then Ava was just like, you know, because Sarah, because Sarah, Sarah was still unconscious. Sarah, Sarah was in the med bay. She's still unconscious. So nobody knows about Sarah's powers yet. You know, so Ava was just like, yeah, I'm going to try to fix my machine, you know, to take my mind off the fact that Sarah is, you know, still unconscious. And then John was just like, but if Sarah is still unconscious, how did you know where we were to come rescue us? And then, you know, she was just like, well, it wasn't us that knew where you were. And then when he turned around, Ash was like, hello, Johnny. And then he's just like, oh, bollocks. And, then, you know, and like, that's how the show ends. So now Constantine, Astra are together on the Wave Rider. Nate, Constantine, and Zari have this will they, won't they situation going on. 
Gary's on the ship. You know, Ava is the temporary captain until Sarah wakes up. And now Sarah has these magic powers where she can see 10 seconds into the future. I did see the coming attractions for the next episode. And Sarah tells everybody about the powers, obviously, because they showed a clip of Sarah. Because next week, Mick's daughter ends up on the Wave Rider, which, which is good. Which shit, that'll probably... That will probably be mixed exit <laughs> when, um, you know, because his daughter's ended up going, going to the wave. That'll probably be mixed exit. So mixed and Mick, Mick's daughter ends up on the wave rider and they showed a clip of Sarah. She had her, um, she had her, her eyes blindfolded. So they probably put the blindfold on her so she would stop seeing into the future. But that doesn't mean she can't see it in her mind. But, um, yeah, that's, that's cool. That, that, that's actually cool. Good episode of Legends because I kind of, I want to see where the Sarah power thing goes. I want to see where the Sarah Power thing goes, and I want to see what happens when Mick actually leaves the show. And now that we actually have... Because Legends never gets a lot of episodes anyway, and I think we're up to episode 10 or 11, so Legends probably has about five more episodes left. And now that we have the Loom of Fate and they have all three rings, what y'all going to do with five episodes left? So, <laughs> so that's, that's all I'm interested in. I can't wait to see what happens next. So thank you for tuning in. Leave a comment, like, and or subscribe. Again, you know... The weather's getting warmer. We got some new stuff coming. Um, you know, some new shows coming up soon, and we'll do some reviews for that as well. Maybe I'll do some reviews outside on the beach so we can have a little change of scenery. So until next time, take care, everybody. Let us up tomorrow. As always, I'm out this bitch.